Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest in Hungary. I hope everybody is having a good week, staying healthy, and being productive. Uh, welcome, everyone. Hi, Bisser. Hi, Beg Jun. Welcome, members. Bisser, I saw the correction with the greeting. That's great. Uh, hi, Rocky. Hi, Shaikh. Hi, Priyanka. Uh, hi, Tanwisi. Nice to see some of our regular students. Uh, while we wait for some more of your peers, uh, this lesson, the IELTS reading section, uh, Band 9 Strategy, is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there for all of our practice exams, videos, interactive courses. For the general IELTS, visit us at G-I-E-L-T-S help. Dot com. That's generalisleshelp.com. Uh, we have loads and loads of great materials there for you. Uh, this is what our academic website looks like here at aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join the premium package. Use the code R4TYJ today to save 20% from the premium package. And uh, you can do the same for general IELTS. It's the green background here. You can click that big red button to join us uh, there. All right, everyone. Uh, getting back to the lesson, um, if you have questions or comments, don't be shy. Uh, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, this is a reading class. Make sure you read with me today. Uh, Rajat, hi. Um, please don't spam. I'll have to put you on timeout. I love the hearts, but within reason. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, again, today reading tomorrow, members will finish that task too. Make sure to complete the introductory paragraph. And then we'll also have some speaking part two uh, tomorrow as well for everybody. All right. Lots of people in the class now. So let's get into uh, some reading. This is our sixth exam and we'll have some new reading passages coming for you next week as well. Um, so this is our sixth exam, and this is reading passage one. Now, as many of you are coming to realize, in order to get those high, high band scores, seven, eight, nine, you definitely have to read the passage. Okay, you have to read the passage. Uh, you can't get very high scores without reading. If you do, like some students say, I got an okay score, and I was just skimming and scanning. Uh, well, that's great, but the bad news is you can probably get an even higher score if you read the passage. Okay. Uh, Paya, yeah, you can use the letter, capital letter T, instead of true, okay, or F instead of false, or N for no. Absolutely. Good question, Paya. Okay, so here we have a list of headings questions. Uh, we looked at strategies for this last week, so we'll use that today. Um, and then here uh, we have the title, Battle for the World's uh, Tallest Building. Hmm. All right, so um, when you read this title, what do you see in your mind? Right away you should uh, see some images, okay? So your first step always is to read the title of the passage, visualize and predict, okay? So step one, read the title, visualize and predict the passage. What do you see when you read a battle for the world's tallest uh, building. Okay, what do you see? Um, Kyber says, I see Toronto CN Tower, not CNN, it's just CN Tower, Kyber. CNN is the uh, television channel. Um, Nick Haim sees a lot of skyscrapers, the skyline of a big city like Dubai or New York. Uh, Bisser says a skyscraper. If you can see a more specific skyline, so I see the skyline of New York and Dubai. Okay, 
uh, skyline means all of kind of the downtown buildings. Uh, Tanwisi sees the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. I see that as well with the, actually, I looked at a picture of Dubai just the other day. So that was helpful for me. Okay, good. Um, so what is this battle for the world's uh, tallest building? Okay. Um, what does that mean? So what is this battle for the world's tallest building? Okay. What do you think that means? So again, this is the next step that you take. It's the critical thinking uh, part of it. Uh, what does that mean? World battle for world's tallest building. Okay. Um, it means constructing the highest office and uh, apartment building in one or another city or country, right? So if you think about that, you probably realize, yeah, now uh, Dubai has the highest building, but I'm sure that in the next hundred years, some other city will build an even higher building. New York will build a building that's even higher or Tokyo uh, or St. Petersburg, but somebody will build a higher building. Okay. All right. So the next question is why, why build such tall buildings? What's the answer to that students? Why would, why would we build these super tall buildings? Why do that? Okay. What's the purpose? I mean, they're super expensive. I can only imagine how much the Burj Khalifa costs. Hmm. Bister says it makes the place more popular. So for popularity, for tourism. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I guess Burj Khalifa is bringing a lot of tourism to Dubai and the surrounding areas. Shampi Jane says for fame and fortune. Yeah, um, for glory, okay, to be famous so that you can say, hey, we built the tallest building in the world. Absolutely. Kurnal says to make the world record, yeah. Uh, bring tourism, attract lots of people. Uh, Shahol, very good. Shahol says economical power, symbol of economic power. Okay. Also a symbol of technological advancement. Okay. How do we build these super tall buildings? So in the real exam, of course, you're just thinking about this. You're not actually writing all of this down. But before you start reading, you're going through all of these steps in your uh, head, okay? Shahal, okay, Shahal. All right, Shahal, thanks for the help and the pronunciation. Okay, so how do we do it? <laughs> Bister says, with a lot of money and great architects. <laughs> yeah, sure, with a lot of money and great architects sure okay uh, any other answers to that yeah okay um rajveer saying our member says with a high level of machinery and skilled labor yeah uh, machines and skilled labor yeah i'm sure that a massive amount of knowledge goes into that with the latest technology um also uh, probably some modern building materials more modern materials, glass, steel, and concrete. Okay, great. So that's what you're doing. So these uh, what, why, how questions, uh, these are happening quickly, students. So you think about them and then you come up with the answers and now you will have a much simpler time to understand the passage. Okay, and then when you're done that, you look at the questions. Now, uh, list of headings questions. 
you should uh, read before the passage. And while you read them, you should paraphrase them at home during practice on paper and in the exam, do it in your head. Okay, so a controversial designation. Um, here I would say this as a debatable, debatable title. Okay, as best as you can, the Industrial Revolution, uh, the Age of uh, Mechanization. or the age of machines, okay? Um, buildings in space, off-world structures. Now, why am I paraphrasing while I'm reading these in my mind in the exam? Because the passage will present this information in different ways, okay? Uh, sometimes students uh, look at these choices and they search for key words like revolution or industrial, but there's a good chance that you're not going to find the same word in the correct paragraph. So be really careful, students. There are some false and bad strategies on the internet and around the world for IELTS. One of those is searching for key words. Um, searching for keywords will cause as many problems as it will help, okay? So it's not your go-to strategy, all right? Uh, keep this in mind. I want to kind of give you that as a, as a thought, food, we say food for thought in English, food for thought. It's an expression, okay? So I'll teach you this expression while I give you the food for thought, okay? So FYI means uh, for your information, or the expression we use in English is food for thought, okay? Um, searching for keywords will lead to as many, if not more, incorrect answers as correct answers. Yeah, so sure, maybe sometimes you'll catch a word and it's the same in the answer as the paragraph, but at the same extent or at the same time, you'll often find that word in the wrong place, in the wrong paragraph, in the wrong sentence, and you're going to answer incorrectly. So that should not be your go-to strategy. It should not be your first choice for strategy. strategy. So searching, it's not... The worst, it's not the end of the world if you have nothing else, but so it's definitely not your first choice for strategy, okay? Keep that in mind. All right. So here, um, let's keep going. So we keep paraphrasing fast and impressive. What's another way to say fast and impressive, okay? Uh, the reign of the churches, the rule of the cathedrals, the Strasbourg Cathedral, the Strasbourg Church, a part of human history, um, a segment of people's past, technology, logistics, engineering, uh, tech, reason, and architecture, uh, the industrial acceleration, um, the faster pace of mechanization or machines, tall structures of the ancient world, high buildings thousands of years ago, looking towards the future, um, predicting um, the next hundred years, okay, something like that. Uh, Amit Hassan says, quickly and attractive, so fast and impressive. Uh, yeah, Amit, Hassan, good, quick and attractive. It's a good paraphrase, okay? Um, Bisser says quick and good. Sure, that works too, all right? Um, impressive, another way to say it is amazing. So quick and amazing, all right? Fine. So that's what you do. You just kind of paraphrase like that in your mind, uh, and you read these before uh, the passage, all right? Uh, let's um, look at the questions after the passage. 
Here we go. Uh, yes, no, not given. Nope. Don't read those. Uh, they will confuse you if there are extra and false statements. So we never read true, false, not given or yes, no, not given. Uh, Puja, that was a good one for um, the churches, the rule and the period of the churches. Okay, so here we have multiple choice. Multiple choice, forget the answers. Again, save some time. Don't read false information or incorrect information. Okay. Um, what was the world's tallest building in 1960? I read that. Uh, what, according to some commentators, is the difference between buildings and structures? Sure. Which statement best summarizes the message of the passage? Okay. And then we're on to the next. So we have 13 questions looking good. And now we read. All right. So here we go. Let's do this together, students. Let's read and uh, make sure to read with me. Okay, so read. And uh, we'll uh, cover some more strategy. Okay, yeah, Jainil, that's right. For multiple choice, only read uh, the question. Okay. All right. So here we go, students. Uh, battle for the world's tallest building. Read with me. The desire to construct taller and taller structures has been a part of human culture for at least 4,500 years. Dating back to ancient Egypt and through the modern day, the construction of tall structures has mirrored advances in technology, logistics, and engineering. Today, the world's tallest buildings are landmarks, tourist attractions, and points of civic and national pride for residents. Okay, um, now to answer the list of headings questions, we always start with those. They will help us with the other questions. Uh, we have to ask, what is this paragraph about? So, step number one for list of headings, list of headings, question strategy. Ask, number one is paraphrase, of course, as I showed you. And then ask, what is this paragraph about? Don't search for the answer. Answer this question first. So in this case, uh, what is this paragraph about that we just read? Okay. Let me show you how I would do that. Okay. So Paya says it's the reason for the tallest buildings and the background. Sure. Georgie says overview. Let's be a little bit more specific. Look how I would do this. Okay. So the desire to construct taller and taller, taller structures has been a part of human culture. Okay, so here, uh, for 4,500 years, people have been wanting to build higher and higher buildings dating back to ancient Egypt through to modern day, okay? So 4,500 years, human culture, uh, Egypt through to modern construction, okay? Um, today, so here I can clearly see that it's past to today, humans build taller and taller buildings. Okay, so that's what I would summarize this as, right? Yeah, Bisser, very good. So Bisser says the desire to build taller and taller structures from the past until today. Yeah, I would say that that's what this paragraph is about. Okay, so humans, tradition or culture or desire. Okay, so human activity to build taller and taller buildings from past until now. That would be my answer. Okay, so now let's see which one of these... Uh, answers is the closest uh, to what I just said. OK, 
Okay, so which one of these do you think is the closest match for my answer of people wanting to build taller and taller buildings from past until now? Okay, if you had to choose, which one of these is the most accurate answer? All right, Jack Patel says number two. Georgie says, I think it's number seven. Amit says number 10. Amanjot says seven. Sammy says 10. Um, Abdi Jabbar says number two. Uh, look at the most popular answer, students. The most popular answer is number seven, and I agree. Okay, so for A, I would choose uh, number seven, a part of human history. What is it to build taller and taller buildings? Okay, I could finish this with a part of human history is to build taller and taller buildings. Okay, so that is the correct answer. That's the most accurate answer. Make sense? Right? So don't overcomplicate. Uh, number two, industrial revolution has nothing to do with it. I'm not sure where students are getting that idea from. There's no mention of that at all. Okay, so it's a part of human history. Um, again, that first paragraph is clearly talking about our history. 4,500 years ago until now. All right. Let's go to the next paragraph. So here we go, students. Read with me. Ancient Egyptians believed that to be closer to the sky was to be closer to the realm of the gods and afterlife. While regular Egyptians had to settle for burial in the ground, the pharaohs got to be entombed much closer to the sky in purpose-built pyramids, the world's first truly high structures. The Great Pyramid of Giza was built in approximately 2560 BCE for the burial of the pharaoh Khufu, reaching a height of 481 feet at the time of construction, the Great Pyramid was the tallest structure in the world for almost 4,000 years. Uh, what is this paragraph about? Okay, so what is body paragraph one about? Okay, and your answer, keep it simple, keep it concise, keep it clear. Okay, Dark Me Too says, Dark Mew Too, Pokemon, I guess, reference. Dark Mew Too says, uh, old, stat old structures of the past. Um, Shaikh says, the construction of the ancient Egyptian pyramids. Uh, Bisser says, the tallest buildings of the ancient world. Yeah, so... The pyramids, right? So that's what it's about. It's not about being closer to the gods, Maksud. It's simply about the tallest buildings of the ancient worlds, the pyramids. It says why they were built and how tall they were and when they were built. Mostly, it's talking about the pyramids. Okay, uh, so let's see what is the closest match. Okay. So which one of these do you think matches the closest in our list of headings to um, what we said, pyramids and the tallest buildings of the old world or the ancient world, okay? Uh, Billy says it's 10, it's X, Prashant, Nikhaim, Thapa, Dark Mew 2, and most of you agree, um, yes, Tall structures of the ancient world, uh, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, that's the answer, an example given. So we know it's X, it's got to be right. Uh, that's how we know we're on the right path. Okay, we're on the right path because IELTS definitely agrees with us on that answer. Okay, um, kind of a little trick that you can do in your real exam is when you get to the list of headings questions, uh, don't look at the example. Just ignore it or try to avoid it and see if you can get the same answer. 
uh, then you know that you're doing it correctly, okay? It's an encouraging uh, kind of a revelation or realization. All right, uh, usually they always give you the easy one, of course, okay? So usually this one is kind of an easy one. They'll give you that one as the example because they want you to figure out the difficult ones, okay? Uh, Tamir Khan, you should read the passage in no more than 12 minutes maximum, okay? 12 minutes. If you're reading at the speed that I'm reading, it's absolutely fast enough and you don't have to understand every word just 70 percent is okay um, let's read C so it wasn't until the year 1311 CE and the construction of the Lincoln Cathedral in England that the height of the Great Pyramid was surpassed at 525 feet it was only slightly taller Throughout the period from 1311 to 1880, the title of the world's tallest building changed hands a number of times through both destruction and construction. But each structure was a European church. Interestingly, the world's tallest building from 1647 to 1874 the Strasbourg Cathedral in France was actually shorter than the original height of the Great Pyramid. Standing 469 feet, the cathedral was approximately 13 feet taller than the Great Pyramid's contemporary height, which had been reduced 35 feet from its original stature by erosion. What is this paragraph about? So once you get the hang of it and you're moving along, you don't need to write down everything. Um, at home, you should write these down in the exam. Just do it in your head. Uh, what is this paragraph about? Simple. Uh, Rangana says it's the cathedral compared with the pyramids. Sheikh says it's the highest, greatest, taller construction. Uh, Amanjot says it's a comparison. Um, Mom says the evolution uh, in buildings. Alex Joseph says the Strasbourg Cathedral. Um, Hina, best answer so far. It's about cathedrals. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, church is a type of cathedral. A church is a big cathedral. Okay, so cathedral. Throughout the period, the title of world's tallest building, okay, um, each time the structure was a European church, the Strasbourg uh, Cathedral in France, okay, the cathedral, all right? So when you see that kind of redundancy in the words, uh, this paragraph is about the cathedrals of Europe being the tallest buildings during the time of these centuries from the uh, 17th to the 19th century, right? That's what I would say. So which one do you think is the closest answer from the choices? What do you think is the choice, the, the closest answer here from these choices, from these choices? Which is the best answer? Remember, students, for the list of headings, you're always looking for the best answer. Not just the right answer, but the best answer. Okay? Rajvir says, European cathedral dominance. That was really good, Rajvir. Which one is the closest to that? Okay, um, and those of you who are answering number five, you're correct. Okay, so the correct answer is number five, the reign of the churches. The Strasbourg Cathedral is an example only. So it's wrong. Okay, uh, list of headings is what is the paragraph about, not the example. All right, so the correct answer is number five. Okay, I have to make some notes here because I can see a lot of students got this wrong. So note, for list of headings, you must choose 
the best answer, not just a right answer. Okay. Also, note for a list of headings, you are choosing what the paragraph is about. not just an example or explanation. Okay, so if I hop back here, um, the Strasbourg Cathedral is only an example. Okay, so Priyanka, the Strasbourg Cathedral is only an example. So I'll show that to you one more time, students. So. Uh, Strasbourg Cathedral, it only comes in here near the end, and it's only one example. It also talks about the Lincoln Cathedral. It also talks about the Great Pyramid, and most importantly, it talks about the period from 1811 to 1880. The title of the world's tallest building changed hands a number of times through both destruction and construction, but each structure was a European church, okay? So that's why it's number five, because it's about the time period and how the tall structures were always churches in that time. That answers the what question, not the why and not the example. All right. Okay. So keep that in mind, students. Always the what, not the why and the how and not the example. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Here we go with the next paragraph, D. Okay, IELTS, lots of critical thinking, okay? All right, here we go. Uh, 1884 marked the first time the world's tallest building stood in North America. The Washington Monument standing 555 feet in Washington, D.C. is also the world's tallest obelisk and tallest all-stone structure. During this period, engineers and architects were reaping the fruits of the 19th century industrial revolution, which led to accelerating advances in construction, engineering, and technology. In 1889, the Eiffel Tower was completed and stood as the world's tallest building at 986 feet for over 40 years. Uh, what is this paragraph about specifically? What is this paragraph about? Okay. So answer it. Again, you don't have to write it all down here, but answer this question. What is it about? Um, Mudassir Wahid, very good, says 19th century's advancements and achievements. Abhishek says industrial revolution. Okay. Um, and is it only the industrial revolution? It's not. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Let me show you something here, students. So, Let me show you something. Here's an interesting trick that you can use to help you with this. So let's imagine for a second that the answer is industrial revolution. Okay. So therefore, Here we go. Um, so if I have a paragraph that's about the Industrial Revolution, then let's write a paragraph about the Industrial Revolution. If I had to write a paragraph about the Industrial Revolution, um, this is what I would do. Okay. So the Industrial Revolution started in the 18th uh, century. 
in um, um, the UK with the automation of manual labor. This means that jobs which had been done by hand, such as working metal and shaping it into various products, or weaving cotton into yarn were suddenly done on a much larger scale by uh, machines, by newly invented machines. And then I would give an example, okay? An example of this was the, and then dot, dot, dot. Okay, um, so this paragraph, is this the same as the paragraph that we just read? No, it's not. And al Kamel is starting to realize this really quickly. Wait a second, that does not look like the paragraph we read. So something is missing here, okay? Um, because here, this is a paragraph that's about the Industrial Revolution. So this is not about the Industrial Revolution only. It's something more than that, okay? So give me the full topic of this paragraph. 1884 marked the first time the world's tallest building stood in North America. The Washington Monument, standing 555 feet in Washington, D.C., also the world's tallest obelisk and all-stone structure during this period, engineers and architects were reaping the fruits of the 19th century's industrial revolution, which led to accelerating advances in construction, engineering, and technology. All right, so Billy says it's advancements in engineering and construction due to the industrial revolution, right? So the better answer is advancements in construction due to the Industrial Revolution. So this is where, again, I have to remind you, you are always thinking about the best answer. Okay? And there's no way you can get this with skimming and scanning. You have to go through the right step. Okay? Maksud says accelerating advances in engineering and technology. Maksud, that will work. And Richvan is going, ah, I think I know what's going on. All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, which one of these is the best answer from our list of headings? Now tell me which is the right answer to this paragraph. Okay, you're probably going to see two of them, and now you will realize which one is the best answer. You'll go, ah, okay, that's the best answer. So there's two correct answers. One is the better answer. Glividator, very good, but not right. Georgi, Mami Shashivi, I think was the very good. Mohammed Azat, very nice. Jainil, excellent, good job. Mohammed, I saw that, that was nice. Sammy, very good. Okay. Mohammed, very good. David Karki, excellent. So the best answer is number nine, Roman numeral nine, the industrial acceleration, right? Accelerate means to speed up, and industrial meaning from the industrial revolution, so the industrial acceleration. So the correct answer is IX, because this is the closest to my answer. So faster, better construction because of the industrial revolution, the industrial acceleration, okay? So 
if I go back to my answer, uh, advancements in, um, so here you go, advancements in construction due to the Industrial Revolution, this is equal to industrial um, acceleration, okay? So those would be equal. Make sense? Hopefully that makes sense, all right? Okay, uh, let's go back, uh, read the next paragraph. And so um, we finished with Eiffel Tower in France, and now we're on to paragraph E. The designation of world's tallest building returned to the United States in 1932 with the construction of the 1,250-foot Empire State Building in New York City, one of the incredible architectural achievements of the 20th century. It was completed in just over a year, an astonishing pace. The first building in the world to boast over 100 stories, the Empire State Building stood as the world's tallest for 36 years. What is this uh, paragraph about? So what is this paragraph about? What is this paragraph about? Again, answer it in your own words. So here it's clearly about a very specific building. Let's see how quickly. Um, so uh, Tural says it's something about fast and what's fast and impressive, Tural? Uh, Charlie Sen says it's the Empire State Building. Yeah, um, the Empire State Building in New York. That's definitely uh, what it's about. Um, and uh, which is the closest match to this? So the Empire State Building. It's about the Empire State Building, and that's correct. Okay, the whole paragraph just talks about the Empire State Building constructed in 19, what was it, 30-something or 60-something? Um, 30 something, I think, 1936. Um, so which is the closest match here to the Empire State Building? Okay, Georgie says it's number four. Tural says it's number four. Glevidator says it's number four. Al Kamel says it's astonishing, equaling impressive. Shiro Jidin agrees. Yeah, so fast and impressive. What is it? It's the Empire State Building. So uh, this is where this is where we're using descriptive paraphrasing. So this is a descriptive paraphrase. So number four is correct. Fast and impressive. It was built in just one year, and it was over a hundred stories tall. Quite amazing. All right. So watch those paraphrasing strategies. Here we go. Uh, next one. After domination by Egypt, Western Europe, and the United States in 1975 saw Toronto, uh, Canada's CN Tower, steal away the designation of world's tallest with a height of 1,815 feet, over a third of a mile high, the CN Tower was the world's tallest for 32 years. This designation is disputed by some academics as they believe a building must be inhabited or worked in in order to count as a building. The CN Tower is neither worked nor lived in, though it does have an observation deck. So while it was unambiguously the world's tallest structure during this period, opinions differ on whether it was the world's tallest building. 2007 clarified any debate there was concerning the designation with the construction of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. It became undoubtedly the world's tallest structure 
and building standing 2,722 feet, precisely 50% higher than the CN Tower. The Burj Khalifa soars over half a mile into the sky. All right. Uh, what is this paragraph about? So again, in your own words, so we have CN Tower, we have Burj Khalifa, but we have something more in here. So your own answer, Taral, your own answer. Don't search. Give your own answer. Um, Rajveer says a debate to prove whether it's a building or a tower. Really nice answer, Rajveer. That's great. M. Verma says it's some kind of controversial. Abhisek says controversial designation of a tall building. Okay. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, Muhammad Akbar says dissenting opinion about the tallest building. Okay. Very good. Nice. So uh, which one of these choices is the best answer? Okay, which one of these is the best answer? Give me the right answer. I'm sure many of you will get it now. You're on a roll. Again, students, when you practice this strategy for true, false, not, or sorry, <laughs> for list of headings, um, when you practice this strategy for list of headings, you will become very fast and proficient. You will have a lot of accurate answers, and all of you are answering correctly now. Number one is absolutely the right answer. It's a controversial designation. Is it a building or is it a structure? Number one is correct. Very nice. Okay, so this is number one, Roman numeral one. You put that into your answer uh, key for, whoa, uh, for uh, paragraph E, and uh, you will have a correct mark. All right, conclusion, last paragraph. Let's do this. So uh, here we go, G, final paragraph. Conclusion and introduction can be challenging uh, to figure out what it's about, but just keep an open mind. Here we go. Where do we go from here? What heights will buildings of the future reach? Will we one day construct buildings that reach into space? While well, the impetus for the construction of taller and taller buildings may no longer be proximity to the gods, the desire to touch the sky with our creations remains. Uh, what is this paragraph about? Uh, Bisser says, I haven't read it yet, but I bet it will be for the future. It makes sense, Bisser, right? Past, present, future. Makes sense, Bisser. It's a good guess. Um, Pooja says it's buildings in space. I don't know if it's buildings in space, Pooja. Um, Alex Joseph says future thoughts about the construction of buildings. Um, Mudasir says the future of construction and engineering. Um, this is just a question. Will they go into space? Will, will, how high will they be? Where do we go from here? Okay. Um, the desire to build taller and taller buildings remains. Okay. So... Uh, that's what that is. Let's see which is the closest match, okay, to that. So, Shell says the future of the buildings. Okay, um, which one is the closest match? Which one is the best answer? Okay, give me your answer. Which is the best here? Yeah, so a lot of you are answering XI number 11. Absolutely. So number 11, it is. Okay. Again, for those of you who are choosing this, it's an incorrect answer. This paragraph isn't about buildings in space. If you're choosing number three, you should reverse um, your thought. Write a paragraph about buildings in space. Okay. So currently, humans are experimenting with building in space. The International Space Station is an example of this. Building in space requires different technology because there is no gravitation. That's not what the paragraph is about. The paragraph is about looking towards the future. So what will happen in the future and what will that be? Uh, students, if you're not sure, like if you have kind of two in your head, like buildings in space and looking towards the future, think about what information you would write for a paragraph on buildings in space 
versus a paragraph of looking towards the future. Does that make sense? So if you're not sure between two answers, think about what would I write for this topic? And then that might make it much clearer for you. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. So I'll give you that as a final tip for these list of headings. Uh, if you are stuck between two choices, which you shouldn't be if you're finding the closest match to the correct answer, but if you're stuck between two choices, think, what would my paragraph contain for each of these? Okay, so hopefully that would help you figure that out. Okay, if you write a paragraph about buildings in space, I think it would contain more than just this. All right. Okay, so students, um, here are some more questions. So these are the yes, no, not given. I'm just going to leave this here for a minute. Uh, you can look at this video later and answer these questions on your own. I'm out of time for today's class, but I will be back tomorrow um, with uh, speaking part two and also for members task two. So make sure that you're here for that class. For everybody who's watching, uh, to get all of our exams, HD videos, interactive courses, apps, and much, much more, uh, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. I wish all of you a fantastic rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy. Uh, I hope that you picked up a lot of good information, vocabulary, strategy from this class, and I look forward to our class tomorrow. Uh, my name is Adrian, and I'm signing out from beautiful Budapest. Bye for now, everyone.